Right, what I'm actually going to do now is rub my butter into my flour. Now you'll notice that when I've actually cut my butter, it's in quite a large lump, and that we want it to actually be into a smaller cube. So using just a normal knife and keeping the butter in your hand, what you're going to do is you're just going to cut through and create cubes. This will mean that it'll rub in far quicker than if you were um, trying to do that as a whole. Now the important thing about rubbing in is that you're not melting the butter, you're coating the flour in the butter, you're coating um, the fat over the flour. That being the case, what you really want to do is, is have really cold hands. I would recommend 100% you run your hands under the cold tap to make sure your fingers are nice and cool. When you are rubbing in as well, what you want to make sure that you are doing is only using your fingertips. So what you do is you take the flour and the butter mixture up to the side of the bowl and rub in. So it is this kind of motion. And when you look at my hands, you'll see that there is no flour or butter on the palm of my hands. Now, what people tend to do is to rub all of the butter into just the top layer of the flour. And what will happen if you do that is that you will end up with some flour that hasn't got any um, fat coating. That will leave you with quite a stodgy um, base to your scones if that's what you're making, because uh, the flour will just sink to the bottom. What you're looking for your um, mixtures to be like is like breadcrumbs. Um, I've heard students quite often say to me, it looks like Parmesan cheese that you get in the little tubs. That's what it should look like. When, so what I would recommend to when you've got to this point where the lumps are quite still quite some, um, large, is to actually put your hand right to the bottom of the bowl and bring up all that fresh flour that has no butter. Now, the reason I am bringing my fingers right up to the side of the bowl is, is another good way to get air into your mixture. You want to have nice fluffy scones, not heavy scones. Also, as soon as you have managed to incorporate all of your butter into your flour, you want to stop working it. If you carry on rubbing in, even though there are no big lumps left, what will happen is you will start to melt that butter and you will end up with um, pastry that tastes a little bit like boot leather.